welcome back so last session we discussed about the negative strainings and in this session we discuss about the strengths and weaknesses of the negative staining here so before going further let us see what are the negative staining procedures here so we have talked about the glow discharge carbon coated grid and this will be exposed to the specimen followed by the blot and then the wash and then followed by the blot and then the stain and thus stained um, grid will be dried for um, typically overnight and then that will be taken out for the um, electron microscope experiment so just have a quick look so this is how it goes the sample sample to the blot 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 to the wash wash to the blot and blot to the stain again and then it will go back to the drying and then that will be taken out for the am experiment so now let's look at um, how um, the strengths and negative strain, um, weakness of the negative strain can be understood so here is a typical micrograph um, recorded for negative strain this is actually from um, one of my experiments um, where i have taken the um, bromozoic virus um, negative strain this is about like a 40000 magnification so all right so first point is the contrast is high when you talk about the negative strain let us look at what the contrast is a contrast as we have um, seen several times is the difference between the uh, strength of the darkness and the brightness so now if you just recollect the principles of the um, negative st staining we know that the scattering of the stain molecule is responsible for the um, image formation so as we all know the negative stain or the staining molecule is um, uh, having like heavy including heavy metals so they will have a greater scattering now if you just recollect since the um, molecule with a greater scattering coefficient is contributing to the dark of it the darkness the strength of the darkness increases thereby increases the contrast of it so in a whole the heavier metal since it is contributing the heavy since the heavy metal is contributing to the scattering um, thereby the contrast we can expect is um, the best uh, in the category so why i'm saying the good so soon we are going to discuss about the cryo em where the contrast will be little less so that's the reason why the contrast is going to be high in the case of negative strain let's look at the um, preparation or the protocol for the negative strain it is easy so as you recollect what is required for negative strain is a simple parafilm a negative strain at appropriate concentration and the wash and the specimen so of course the glow discharger so all these are um, easily achievable within the laboratory and you don't need to go for any extra preparation and handling of the um, negative staining is uh, relatively easy compared to the cryo em so all these points that here, here i'm talking about are with reference to the cryo em so we are going to talk about how the sample can be prepared in cryo em um, maybe in the next presentation so now we have just to come at two advantages of the negative strain one it is going to give us the good contrast good contrast means a good quality of the image and easy to prepare next advantage of this negative strain is almost no radiation damage of the specimen so let us look at what is this word let's carefully attend pay attention to this word i am not saying all um, i am saying almost no but i am not saying um, no radiation damage so this indicates that there will be a radiation damage to a considerable or maybe um, um you know, background level and um, we are, cannot say that there is no radiation damage in the electron microscope experiment so the moment you expose your specimen to the electron microscope column there is a potential chance of radiation damage then why we are saying almost no radiation damage this is again with reference to the cryo em experiment so um, this we are saying almost no radiation damage of the specimen gives you um, a hint that um, 
the cryo em may suffer with potentially more radiation damage and of course we can we will discuss about there in the cryo em how to minimize such radiation damage now so with reference to on the cryo em we understood that the radiation damage is least or negligible level in the negative strain but the question raises why so so again this has a reference to the good contrast so now that the negative stain molecule is capable of giving a good contrast um, naturally you can minimize the exposure time so that um, a good quality of the image can be obtained with least exposure time so that means a least exposure time to the electrons will um, reduce the radiation damage so again these two points go together the good contrast forms a base for the um, negligible or least radiation damage and good contrast has a base at the greater than scattering coefficient of the strain molecule so yeah we have covered three points here a good contrast easy to prepare and almost no radiation damage now let's look at the fourth point so this technique can help us to include almost all spectrum of the macromolecules um, into the electron microscope range so what does that mean it can um, include a smaller molecule to very large molecules um, that includes the molecular complexes as well so why the smaller molecules are capable of i mean the why the smaller molecules um, has the visibility in the electron microscope experiment that again points to the good contrast so that means since you are able to uh, generate a good contrast even a smaller molecule uh, is a, be able to um, pick up in the electron microscope experiment so when you have the capability of looking at the smaller molecules no need to talk about the very large molecule complexes so that means literally um, a considerably wider range of the molecules are available for the negative strain experiment so again this has a reference to the cryo em experiment there we will be just limiting about only the very large molecules um, taking away the smaller molecules um, in the reach of the cryo em so now the negative strain molecules includes the smaller two very large molecules then the question arises what exactly the smaller is is there any benchmark for it so if you refer to any textbooks they say that any molecule um, less than 100 kilo dalton is um, uh, um, suitable for a negative strain experiment but you know what one uses says records are meant for breaking so we have um, well let me say I have just worked out on a molecule uh, which is typically of the order um, molecular weight of 75 kilo Dalton bringing down the limit of 100 kilo Dalton to 75 kilo Dalton so that means so far the people has worked about like a 75 kilo Dalton um, and higher and the upper limit sky is the limit you can just use typically any molecule of course you cannot just put your hand and just say that yeah i want to just look at my um, hand in the electron microscope so the very large molecule includes the molecular complexes not the um, the day-to-day -day objects that you see in your world because for that we have what is called optical microscope and that will serve the purpose so now that we have a uh, um, smaller molecule and very large molecule included in the negative strain now the negative strain molecule has the strength in four folds the good contrast easy to prepare and least radiation damage and a broader spectrum of the molecules now let us look at on the negative um, side of the negative strain a good word negative side of the negative strain first one is the sample might be distorted so this has two reasons why the sample can um, go distorted one um, if you recollect the process of the negative stain it is the um, molecule the staining molecule that surrounds the um, macromolecule so that means the macromolecule will undergo some kind of stress um, in the ocean of the negative stain molecules and that interaction the heavy metal interaction may distort the structure of it one second see um, as you can see this the entire molecule after drying of course the sample is dry is at another disadvantage and you know that the sample 
um, is required to be dry so that means we take away all the water and this will cause what is called um, loss of activity of your protein so that means the sample is dry it is loss of water and once any macromolecule which is lack of water um, will lose its activity so that is one disadvantage so in other words um, using the negative stain what the structure that you are going to get is not to be considered as physiologically relevant structure so what's a physiologically relevant structure the protein likes to have it in its native environment so native environment includes water and taking away the water in the form of drying um, it will not qualify it for a um, native environment so this is one disadvantage and of course we have remedy for it we will come back to that and in addition to just drying it we also expose the specimen to the vacuum conditions so again what happens the sample which is lack of water when it is exposed to the um, the vacuum what happens um, something what is called a flattening results in so what is a flattening uh, for example take a football and just remove all the water the air inside it and just imagine um, placing a football inside a vacuum chamber so that means that will take away all the um, air molecules away and um, can you still expect the football to be um, in a uh, really spherical shape no not at all what happens it just becomes flattened and same is the case here and this is the best example i'm showing here the virus molecule which is typically of the spherical nature when taken away all the water content may lose its spherical nature and will show some kind of flattening effect and that um, is at another contribution to say that the structure that you are going to observe in the negative stain is non-physiological relevant so these two concepts are interrelated the sample might be distorted for two folds one lack of water second exposure to the vacuum conditions second the dry is re referring to uh, the lack of water molecules then the resolution that you can um, obtain from the typical negative stain experiment is limited to 20 angstroms if you go back we started our discussion in the electron microscope saying that this is capable of uh, producing high um, resolution but here the resolution is a little low 20 angstroms um, what is high resolution means typically of the order of few angstroms is what we qualify as the high resolution so now this is in contrary to what we started with why this low resolution is happening because the resolution or the contrast is coming from a stain molecule so that means the molecule produces the stain because of the negative stain molecule and wherever the um, the places where the negative stain can reach is only um, image um, is possible to image and that's why the resolution is limited to 20 angstrom so in other words the um, being the bigger size of the macro the staining molecule it cannot reach every um, available place in the molecule thereby leaving some finer details and that's um, the, that's why we um, get only the low resolution in the um, negative strain experiment so let's recap all the points here we have the plus points as good contrast easy to prepare no least radiation damage and smaller molecule to larger molecule whereas the um, negative points are sample might be distorted the dry and the resolution is limited to typically 20 angstroms but sometimes it happens that um, the negative strain can take us even poorer resolution something like 25 to 30 angstroms then the question arises if 25 to 30 angstroms is the um, resolution do we really have to go then the question comes um, the advantage is it includes even the smaller molecule which is not possible with the cryo em so that means the question raises whether to go for something or have nothing so that means this something with even with poor resolution sometimes will shed some light on it so that's why still negative strain is the favorite topic for a lot of people and as i said since it is easy to prepare most labs use the negative stain for the screening purposes uh, before um, going for a serious attempt for uh, with the cryo em experiment so that's the about the um, negative stain and let's come back and see about the flattening effect so in addition to um, removal of the water some laboratories experimented with what is called a sucrose cushion 
what is a sucrose cushion so the buffer that we um, start with and uh, in which the protein is stored or the virus is stored will have will be added um, with some uh, sucrose concentration so sucrose as you all know it is sugar content and when the water is taken away the sucrose will still remain inside the empty space of the molecule thereby adding extra cushion for the molecule and thus can uh, minimize the uh, flattening effect so that's another way of just coming out of uh, um, the sample might be non -relevant, physiologically relevant but in no way we can avoid the distortion of the sample that is caused by the stain molecule so that's about um, all this um, in a negative stain as you can see the contrast here is high the molecule is looking um, like a spherical here if you are capable if you can just make a zoom in you can see the hexamers and the um, pentamers within the virus particle as I said this is a virus particle everyone knows virus particle will have a five fold and six fold arrangement that is also known as the pentamers and hexamers that can be clearly seen if you just zoom in um, at this virus molecule so that's about the next stain um, next session we so now that we are done with the cryo negative stain, the next presentation will talk about the cryo EM, uh, its protocol, its strengths and weaknesses. So stay tuned for um, the next presentation, which exclusively deals with the cryo EM. Thank you.